Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you, Creative Mornings, for inviting me here. Um, and thank you, everybody, to come here uh, this early. <laughs> uh, I will talk about this month's topic, sound. Um, what is sound? Uh, it's like just noise, like la la, talk talk, dada. <laughs> this is where the name dada machines actually comes from. I wanted to have something phonetically uh, telling already in the name what uh, like dada machines could be. And uh, like sound is like this universal language connecting people actually. This is what makes me as well passionate about sound. And uh, not only sound, like if I think about sound, it like probably most of you as well will think about music. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I grew uh, up in Bavaria, uh, close to the city Weilheim. Maybe some of you have heard of the band called No Twist or Lalipuna or Konsole or went to Bar 25 and saw a set of Acid Pauli which is one, uh, one DJ I was playing with uh, when I was doing uh, uh, my apprenticeship as a carpenter when I was 16 years old <laughs> and uh, playing DJ sets uh, pretty much every weekend. And um, through this uh, hobby of mine, DJing, I met a good friend of mine, he's called Tyson. He's part of the band La Lipuna, uh, which is one of the bands from Weilheim and uh, we are friends since then, uh, like 2000, something like this. And yeah, I realized I don't want to become a, a professional DJ at some point. Uh, I wanted to become a product designer actually. Um, so I'm a designer as some of you as well. And uh, back then I had the dream to actually be connect like my practice as a carpenter because I'm a seventh generation carpenter um, with design and become like a furniture designer like Konstantin Gritschic or Stefan Dietz some of you might know or have heard of and as well I was uh, a lot into biking because I was racing bikes uh, like yeah professionally for seven years and I wanted to build bike frames but actually yeah, to be honest, I never uh, built a bike frame until now in my practice as a product designer. Um, yeah, but what's my connection to music nowadays? Like, uh, yeah, I'm building instruments and uh, yeah, how comes? Because um, uh, like the only instrument I ever played was actually the triangle. Uh, <laughs> I didn't uh, learn any other instrument and uh, yeah, why that? Because my mother, she had to learn uh, the violin in the boarding school and uh, she was uh, forced to by her parents to do that and uh, actually she didn't want me to learn an instrument. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, but this ancient instruments actually are super hard to learn. That's like a problem from my point of view. And, but uh, like uh, for me, it was really a chance to invent instruments, like not playing an instrument, like one of these ancient instruments, because like, uh, like these instruments like have this barrier, like you see them, you see a piano on stage, you see the violin and everybody knows like already when seeing them, it's super hard to play them. You have to uh, make practice for years. And they're not like, uh, yeah, you touch them and you can start. <laughs> and I wanted to uh, actually create instruments everybody can just grab and start playing. So making something intuitive, uh, everybody can use. Uh, yeah. And so uh, 2013, um, after studying product design in Schwäbisch Gmünd, and uh, running a software company on the side. I came uh, 2012 to Berlin to study for my master's in Weissensee Art University and uh, connect like my passion for actually for coding and for software and product design. And uh, so I started doing a master in interaction design and um, 
as well for my master thesis I wanted to do something with like which I'm passionate about and that was music um, so I had the idea to work on this topic like to create uh, instruments uh, and uh, yeah I decided to go for uh, uh, like a uh, topic in this field uh, and I was really interested in tangible interfaces back then and I saw a lot of uh, room to improve instruments um, and yeah DJing uh, like uh, from the early 2000 years uh, like uh, when digital DJing as well came up I saw a lot of problems uh, because like you have uh, people on stage, they use their computer to play, and uh, like this is the trend we have like uh, the last at least 15 years or 16 years uh, per, uh, performances played by artists, and uh, they're using like this the computer as their instrument, and uh, like the computer is only this universal device, and it's not made for music. Uh, and uh, you have like a problem connecting to the audience because you don't know if the artist is reading his email, if he's on Facebook <laughs> or if he's actually playing live. Uh, so you have this uh, barrier between the audience and uh, the musician. And this is what I wanted to work on. And the question I uh, asked myself was how to over overcome this disconnect between the artist and the audience. So. Uh, yeah, and the problem is called black boxing actually. So you have this system uh, where you have an input and uh, the actual system, and then you have the output like the loudspeaker, but you don't really know what's going in, uh, on inside the system, and you can't see uh, what's going on. So like, like in in music, you have all these controllers, you have interfaces, then you have most of the time nowadays you have the computer in, in between and then you have loudspeakers. Um, and there's great tools out there, like uh, one idea was to work on software actually in the beginning. Uh, and uh, like Ableton here in Berlin and Native Instruments, uh, you might know, they're doing great software and they started actually to work on hardware as well, because they saw the same problems. They saw like we are creating great tools for artists, but uh, to make the experience for the audience and for the musician better, we have to do hardware, we have to do uh, tangible interfaces. So uh, Ableton, for example, released the push, I think 2013, uh, developed together with Akai, which is like a well-known company doing music hardware and uh, native instruments at the same time actually started as well doing their own hardware. Um, but I don't want to do a controller. Um, I want to do, do something for everybody because like these tools from Ableton and native instruments pretty much for professional users mostly. And there's now like with the iPad actually, this is one point where I saw a big chance for everybody to use, use instruments. Uh, there's a lot of apps and like everybody knows how to use a uh, mobile phone <laughs> and uh, the iPad uh, like three-year-old children can use it and like there's great apps out there to get started with music actually this one is called Auxi which I'm using a lot in my workshops um, but I wanted to go even further uh, on my journey creating instruments for everybody, like music creators, not for engineers or sound engineers. And uh, yeah, what, what makes music uh, like uh, fun and beautiful and unique? Everybody of you might have been like to a live concert and what's the special thing about that? Like actually it's like mistakes, it's error, like you see on stage, like it's not perfect but this makes the performance unique and uh, like different to like listening to CD or seeing this perfectly done uh, video of a performance. <laughs> so, uh, and as well, uh, like this live music we saw back in the 60s where, when there was no computer 
uh, which was uh, like purely analog, um, was much better for the user to see what's going on. So like uh, you could much better read what's going on. And this is what I wanted to bring together with my ideas on music. And this is uh, what I wanted to work on uh, with data machines. And with data machines, actually, uh, I'm creating a system uh, for music machines. So we have a, a input, which could be the iPad to make it easy to use, like have this digital workflow which uh, allows precision uh, for somebody who's not trained, like to be always in time. And then we have uh, like this controller in between, and then we have actually analog sound uh, with motors. <laughs> uh, and yeah, my, my, my vision is to like make multi-sensory experiences with this toolkit, like bridging uh, analog and digital workflows. Yeah, so we have uh, here, you see some motors as well here on stage. I have made a little setup and these motors are used uh, to really play physical analog instruments uh, with a digital workflow. And uh, you can not only use like uh, real instruments we, we already have out there to create music, but as well uh, my idea was to use everything around us to create noise or sound and uh, so that everybody can create his own uh, sound, like not only the sound we know already from a xylophone. Uh, everybody, everything should be used to make uh, music, actually. And uh, it should be that easy that even children can use it. This was one target of mine as well. And today that's not there yet. <laughs> Actually, when you want to build music machines nowadays, it looks like this. <laughs> this is where we started. You just get like a circuit board. You have to solder a lot. You have to uh, know about electronics. You have to know about mechanics. Uh, and you have to really become a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, working with my friend, uh, I know from my DJing practice, Tyson, who uh, is playing for La Lipuna to make music, but as well working with theater in Munich. Um, we uh, started out to uh, work on a theater play, 20,000 miles beyond sea level in Munich, in a uh, uh, theater for children, actually. and. Uh, there we had our test case to build music machines, uh, like the submarine of uh, 20,000 miles beyond sea level is like the stage and uh, the submarine of Nemo has a lot of machines and these are music machines actually. And here's like a little video, I hope that works. Hilfsakkumulatoren für Einspeisung vorbereiten. Der Garten eben auf dem Meeresgrund. Das Meer ist das Medium eines Übernachts. Wunderbar.
yeah, building this uh, setup for theater, like using more than 300 motors, having piano, having a drum kit, having xylophone, having clogger and harmonica, like a huge setup. We learned so much about uh, how this technology can be uh, made uh, accessible to everybody because <laughs> we made a lot of errors ourselves. We burned a lot of things and uh, yeah, we saw uh, that's not there yet for everybody to use. And um, yeah, 2013, I was uh, then uh, working on this with Tyson and 2014, I was done with my prototype and my master thesis actually. And since then I continued working on the project. Um, and actually uh, this year, uh, early this year, I was approached by Plexspace, came as Plexspace in Munich. Uh, uh, agency working for Audi, uh, they approached me um, about the pr like build a music machine for Audi for their leading showroom in Munich on the airport, and uh, the idea was to use car parts as because I was already telling everybody of my friends, yeah, I have the system, and friends of mine work in this agency and like telling them about the idea everything should be used to make music uh, objects as well and then we created this installation consisting out of yeah normal instruments like a xylophone you see here like some parts of drums and then as well car parts <laughs> so uh, yeah actually we selected car parts uh, and then created this installation but it, it was not that easy because like you don't know how something sounds when you order it online and I think it's much better if you just go out there you go to like a shop where there's a lot of parts and then you hit on everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and this was a lot of fun and here's a little video which is not final sound actually. <laughs> we just got this yesterday. This uh, case study actually was a good uh, verification of the system I built the years before because like for theater we it took us like one and more, uh, more than one year to build the system and we built this in four weeks <laughs> and this uh, showed really like how, how good it is to have a framework to have a system uh, to use ourselves actually we created it for ourselves uh, as well <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's other bands or like uh, other people already out there since two years using the system as well to see what others can create with it besides going to make a fair, going to workshops in London Music Hackspace, uh, Kick Festival in Belgium. I have been in a lot of places with a lot of different people like building setups, using the stuff and uh, one band, uh, they're called Yuazinho, they made their latest album with the system as well. And this should show. Huh? <laughs>
This is what uh, one guy who came to make a fur wrote in his article. I really like this uh, uh, quote actually uh, from Donald Bell, uh, who will get one of the kits I'm now building uh, in January because I'm building 15 kits now for my beta tests or like uh, verification of the pretty much final product and send it out to artists. Uh, and uh, yeah, actually, I think we could do a small demo here now. Um, so we have here interface. That's the, the app I told you about before. Uh, Auxi, it's free. You can download in the app store and use it as well without <laughs> music robots or music machines. And each of the rows is like one of the motors and you can then build up sequences. And yeah, there's arrow. <laughs> and you, you can just play around and see um, what sounds you like and uh, sequence them. And then as well in the app you can have melodies as well, like from another sound uh, loop. Yeah. And then you can go on and build up and build up and go crazy and <laughs> And probably parents will hate me at some point because <laughs> I, I, I see children annoy all the neighbors for a whole day. So uh, yeah, why now? Uh, there is a big trend for Internet of Things actually and I uh, want to work on the Internet of Instruments as well, connect artists worldwide uh, and make the machines like for example what we built for theater available for others so they send us the scores, we play the scores and the machines are recorded and send it back. So they create this community, uh, which is already there, but they are not connected. Like uh, um, they meet physically. Like we had this uh, festival two months ago in Musikbrauerei uh, called We Are The Robots. And it was really great because like all the, the inventors of music machines came there it was a big nerd fest and everybody was showing his machines and uh, composers were invited to play on these machines and uh, it was really uh, cool to see how they uh, as well think about data machines because uh, you, you take actually their magic somehow and make it available to everybody and I thought, oh shit, they will hate me, <laughs> but actually they really liked it and uh, a lot of them want to use it in their work because like, they think, yeah, hey, you are building something that I can work on the ideas and then the music I wanted to realize and not on the basics, on the foundation. And yeah, as well with the app, uh, apps like music uh, creation, mobile music creation is a big uh, uh, topic right now. And then uh, what you see in Fab Lab, for example, here in Berl uh, Berlin, uh, rise of uh, digital manufacturing technology, like everybody can use a 3D printer, everybody can create physical things much easier than like, yeah, going to do an apprenticeship for carpentry for years. Like now you can go to a workshop in Fab Lab for CD tool and in the evening you have something physical there. And this is really as well a big chance to create the setups uh, much easier than it was uh, possible years before. And then uh, coding becomes mainstream nowadays as well and like the system is open from, uh, with, this, uh, with its architectures, so it's built on Arduino. Everybody who is like bored about the, the basic system, he can open up the box, he can change the code, he can extend the hardware, so you can really grow up with the system. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, use cases besides only music. You can build kinetic installations where things are moving. You can build light installations. And then 
uh, there's teaching uh, for different topics and there's as well uh, yeah the the field uh, helping disabled people actually like I went to music tech fest and then um, people approached me like um, from one foundation in the UK hey can you build a setup where somebody without legs can play the pedals of the piano like this is actually stuff you can do with robotics <laughs> and with this system and it's really nice as well I think yeah and uh, to make it av available to everybody um, I'm I will do a Kickstarter campaign in February probably we are right now uh, building up the website, uh, shooting video with uh, artists and uh, that's like the next step for the project and we will see how it goes. Yeah, And uh, to work on this uh, actually, uh, yeah, where does the money come from? <laughs> uh, there was uh, like two years of bootstrapping and I was lucky um, that in October like just recently I got into a project called Design Farm Berlin which is a project of uh, my former professor in Weissensee, uh, Carola Zwick and uh, the, um, the professor for business, Olaf Bach. They making an accelerator uh, for designers to um, like connect creative uh, industry and business and supporting my project for the next six months. And yeah, so I can work full time on the project. Yeah, if you want to follow the process, uh, follow on Facebook or Twitter or on my website. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>